So hi guys, um, welcome, here we are, another Q&A, a few months after our last one. Uh, I'm just going to open in prayer and then we're going to get on with it. Just to give you a little warning, uh, we're going to do like minimal edits to this, so there might be things that we mess, us, mess up as we say them, just like that. Um, but just please, we're going to keep them in, so please forgive us for that. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that you are good to us, thank you for how you've kept us. Thank you that in a time of difficulty and crisis, we can turn to you to know you to be our rock. Father, we know that many have found this a very difficult time. Thank you that they have been able to turn to you. Pray, help us uh, to keep resting in you in this difficult time. Lord, give us wisdom as we move forwards. Um, thank you for your church. It is such a blessing to us. Amen. 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 Um, so here we are, Q and A. You've sent in some questions. We've got some questions we think will be really helpful to answer. Um, but we're just going to kick off with some kind of casual stuff. Um, so, Rich, how have you found lockdown so far? Uh, it's been odd, hasn't it? It's been very strange. Um, I didn't try, try to pick up on some of the positives, just personally, very silly thing. But have been some good food additions <coughs> to our lives. So, pancakes Saturday mornings. And a roast dinner every Sunday, right. um, so Ooh. that has been a, a very enjoyable thing, and something right. hopefully um, keep keep going on. Uh, but but more importantly, uh, church-wise, I think actually there have been a, a whole number of positives to to, to look to as well. Yeah, have been. Um, I think seeing so many people make a real effort yeah. in looking out for each other, helping mm. each other um, uh, through this time has, has been really wonderful, actually. Yeah. Mm. And then just for more some of the the church uh, events, I guess. Um, I think there have been some positives. Obviously, it's it's not been ideal, but for home groups and things like that, we've managed to see uh, perhaps people who wouldn't usually be able to make it out on yeah. Wednesday nights mm. been able to come, particularly uh, the, young um, families, young families mm. uh, to be able to be there. And and I think probably anyone who's been to one would agree the Sunday nights have been great. That the yeah. prayer and praise, yeah. so many people getting involved, mm. um, and it's been lovely to see others in the church and to to join together praying. I think together. we had 17 taking part last Sunday night. That was our record so far. Or, Very good. Yeah, maybe 18 with me. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So I think those, yeah, those have been some big positives from yeah. my point of view. Yeah. And Wes, notice you, now we can, you've <laughs> had um, a lockdown lock, but professionally. <laughs> yeah, properly done. So halfway through lockdown, my son, Caleb, cut my hair. And um, the hairdresser yesterday, he didn't have a bad word to say about my son's haircut. So, um, yeah, he couldn't have done a bad job. If you don't think I've had my hair cut or there's much of a difference, you need to look at Monday's devotion <laughs> and today's, Tuesday's devotion. It really is quite shocking, the difference. <laughs> it's all gone. Um, yeah, because hairdressers have opened up because this has been the weekend where there have been those changes again as things yeah. are eased down. So restaurants, pubs, um, weddings in churches that many Christians have been lobbying the government for for a long time now. Uh, they are able to actually go ahead, which is fantastic for couples that have been waiting. Um, I've had my haircut especially as well because Jane and I are going to a wedding this Saturday. Um, lots of you will remember uh, Mark uh, Heaviside, the army officer, who has just come out of the army actually, but he's getting married in Wiltshire. So we're there and they've said that 30 can attend. So that's changed as well because initially they were saying there could only just be five perhaps in the church when they decided. So that's been great for them, even though it's hugely different than what was planned. Um, and of course, the big, big thing and the reason for why we're chatting um, now is that places of worship have been able to open um, from this past Sunday on. Mm -hmm. So there's been an awful lot of talk about that. Um, different churches have, haven't and so on and we're going to be answering some of those questions. Yeah, so Rich, as Wes just said, like churches can now open. Um, why aren't we opening yet? Yeah, great question, isn't it? And uh, we've all seen the news, we've seen um, churches being, being able to open and um, people meet together uh, and actually maybe like you've spoken to friends who in churches around the country who 
have uh, been able to, to meet even this Sunday. Mm. Um, so uh, people are doing it and we really want to say we want to. Yeah, we we would love to be doing so the yeah. same. We'd love to be gathering uh, again all together. Yeah. Um, and particularly for those who are and have been more isolated through yes. this time, who, yeah. who found it's a really difficult time from all those points. Because that's important to mention, especially because we began, and rightly so, with some really great positives. Mm. We know it has been so incredibly hard for a lot of people these mm. past few months. Yeah. Absolutely. So, so we, we would love to be together. And, and that's maybe even intensified when we see others doing so. Yes. Um, but actually, I think just in terms of rea- in reality, a lot less churches are actually doing than that than perhaps we might yeah. expect. I mean, you, you earlier today were telling us about a survey. Yeah, I just saw an anecdotal survey sort of on Twitter, and only nine percent of pastors surveyed were actually opening up again. Yeah, right. So, so the so actually, I think in a sense, probably a, a lot of churches are actually going slowly at this stage and yeah. kind of seeing um, where yeah. and how they they might be able to do it. Uh, but just to yeah, clarify, the government has said that place of worship can open mm-hmm. um, and uh, with social distancing um, uh, along the side. So, uh, and, and they've given really um, complex and comprehensive guidelines yeah. Yeah. for what that would look like. Um, and, and they are, I say, complicated things. Um, and uh, once we take those difficulties and, and we combine them with the complications of us doing the building work, yeah. which we hope maybe starting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, when you bring all those things together, it's just not feasible for us to, to, to meet together at the moment. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. So particularly with the building work, for example, we don't know what it's going to mean for the rest of the building. Obviously, the work's yeah. in the main service area, but we don't know that the, the chaos that it might, might bring the rest of the building. So with all that, we're just not in a position to be able to, to, to do so at the moment. And the whole reason of bringing the building work forward was because of the limitations of mm. not being able to meet or meeting in a limited way we knew as well so we again it was deemed this ideal time wasn't it, to do it absolutely yeah, yeah. Um, and so if we, but if we take out the main area actually interesting I, I walked around with a tape measure that is in between us to make sure that we're two meters apart but I, I went around the lounge and um, the Ural and some just with a tape measure with chairs to try and work out how many we might be able to, to get mm. in it really surprised me how few it was so what was it in the lounge? So in the lounge, it was f- about 14, maybe. And that's no. with chairs set up as twos, which obviously wouldn't all be all w- look like that no. if we have any kind no. of meeting. So about 14, and the Royal Instrument was 35. Again, in right. kind of small groups. Yeah. So realistically, you'd probably be slightly less than that. Mm. And that really surprised me, actually, about how many you could physically fit. Mm. Um, and again, so w- when we kind of put all these things together, that's why we said the moment there's going to be no physical gatherings mm. till September at the earliest. Mm. Now, of course, we will uh, later in the summer, we'll reassess and we'll see where yeah. it is and what we might be able to do um, from September or, or onwards. But I think it's likely to, to say that actually whatever the first physical gatherings might be, it probably won't be a Sunday morning service. Mm. Mm. Um, so what that might be, whether it's small groups or, or something like that, I, I don't know. And that especially being because the main worship area exactly. will be a building site. Exactly. So yeah, that's And all we could yeah. do is meet in the Rawlinson and then it would be 34 max bring it down if we're separating some chairs to 25, yeah. 28. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So yeah, Sunday uh, we expect the building work to be finished. I mean, best case scenario beginning of October, but that's okay. the very best. So yeah. Sunday mornings are going to be difficult for and like you said, we don't know whether, when they move in, whether they're going to be needing to use the Rawlinson for materials, things, and so on as well. So sh- shouldn't, they shouldn't have to be doing that, okay. but we're just kind of dirt and dust and all, and all yeah. those other things. Yeah. Okay, who knows? So, Wes, what, what is it going to look like when we can meet back together? Have we got any ideas? Yeah, are you ready? <laughs> I've got my list in front of me here. Um, so please be patient. Um, now, we're very fortunate belonging to the FIC. You know, there's six, 650 odd churches that belong. John Stevens, the national director, he is involved in a weekly meeting with 40 other faith leaders with the government who are being, he says, as helpful as possible. 
understanding that while easing lockdown, that has become far more complex than just right at the beginning, everything's closed. But easing off and introducing different measures to, to open up is, is quite complex. Um, but it's great to get his input. He's sharing each week in a webinar. Last week I was on with nearly 300 other um, ministers from churches just talking all about this and that, that was very helpful. Um, but just a few reminders. Um, Scotland and Wales, by the way, that their churches can't open yet. So they've not made any decisions still. So this is just something for England. Um, this is a really big prayer point as well for our um, brothers and sisters in Abbey Wood. They, of course, meet in a school. Um, the school has said they're not looking at opening it up to people like them until at least midway through um, the autumn term. So we really do need to be praying for Abbey Wood um, and the difficult predicament that they're going to be in. Um, the government have, have said that before any church services go ahead, there's got to be a proper risk assessment that's done. That's got to be um, signed off by the trustees. So the deacons and elders will need to um, make sure that's put in place. This is where we could throw out um, and ask for help because we may not be aware, but maybe you're involved with that at your place of work and you could come and add expertise because we'll need to get a team together to do that, please. Um, and, and what we're wanting to do as trustees, we, we met last week and had a really helpful meeting. We, we do want to abide by all of the government guidelines. We don't want to see them as draconian. We see the fact that they've got a very complex job and we want to abide by these um, to be law abiding and obviously to be an exemplary example in the community. Um, it would be horrendous if because we were lax, because we didn't adhere to things, there was some breakout um, that would really dishonor God's name and would damage the witness of our church and the community. So we, we really do want to do things correctly for that. So, so here are some of the um, restrictions. Um, there will have to be a, a, some sort of registration so people won't just be able to wander in. We'll need all the details before. Whether we do that on the day as they arrive or beforehand online, we're not exactly sure. That's for track and trace purposes that you'll have heard all about. Um, we'll need to introduce a, a one-way system of, of coming in one way and coming in um, households at a time as well. We won't be able to just walk in like we normally do. And then we'll have to go out uh, another way. Obviously, when people come, there won't be any handshakes, hugs. That's, that's obvious. Social distancing will still need to go on. So like Rich was sharing earlier, um, what that would look like when we do open up in our main um, worship area, whether that's 40 yards, 45. I mean, it's quite incredible to think that a building of 250 chairs with social distancing is brought down to about 45 or so. Um, so that in itself, where we get 200 plus coming here regularly, that is problematic. Not everyone by a long shot can come. Um, there can't be any Sunday school. There can't be any crash. Jane was only saying last night, she said, oh, I'm missing Sunday school mm. and teaching so much. I really am. And, and, and they're really tough things for, for children, yeah. for, for them to be able to get their heads around. So if they were coming to church, oh, no, no. You know, imagine trying to explain that to a, to a three-year-old who, who's busting to, yeah. to get out. Um, we can't get the toys out um, because there can't be any of that sharing and so on. There'll be no refreshments because of obviously difficulties there with different things being touched and pass on so, and so, so on. So there'll be really no biscuits? There'll be no biscuits. <laughs> no, there certainly um, will be no biscuits. You could probably bring your own. Uh, and right. you might be able to bring a flask, I don't know. But um, th and this, this is where, I mean, it, it, it's hard not to almost joke about these things, but, but it really is tough. The, there won't really be able to be any fellowshipping beforehand and afterwards because we'll come in separately. There'll be a one-way system. We'll go out separately. We're encouraged to keep time to a minimum. So the services will have to be shorter. People will be asked to 
leave the whole premises and that includes outside uh, immediately. Um, this, is a, this is a really tough one that lots of you will have heard about before, I'm sure, no singing. So Public Health England, at the moment, they believe in, in the brief little tests they've done, it, it is a key way of spreading things. Now they're not picking on us as churches, that's the same for theatres, cinemas, pubs and so on. Um, they are doing far more thorough tests at the moment though and they're saying those results will be out in about three weeks so so that might 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 loosen up um, it, it's getting a little bit tougher with some of these things as well um, none of the vulnerable people health wise will be allowed to come to church so any underlying health issues that that's a real no-no for them attending um, for us who are preaching, that there's no raising your voice, no preaching. You've simply just got to speak into the mic. Um, maybe some people would be quite relieved at that um, without me getting all excited. Um, I've saved the toughest to the last, and it's really going to hurt me to say this if you don't know this. All over 70s are strongly advised not to attend. And, and I know that is going to come as a, as a hammer blow to, to so many, especially who are used to meeting up, not just Sundays, but Mondays for leisure time, Tuesdays for Tuesday fellowship and so on, Friday Bible study, Tuesday nights. So that, that, that's really tough. And that's where as a church, we've really got to pastorally go out of our way and almost, I suppose you could say, mourn with those who mourn, because that, that is going to be very devastating. Um, Can I just check, check with, so that's the over 70s and, and the, the kind of more vulnerable with those with health conditions, that'd be the same for them, we, we would recommend them staying at home, is that right? Yeah, the, yeah. the, the government are strongly, strongly advising advised, yeah. that they keep away. So, so again, that's that difficulty where it's, it's not legal, I illegal if, if they did turn up, but they're strongly advised not to. Now how that would affect us if there was a problem with risk assessments being done and so on and signed off. Not exactly sure on legal mm. um, implications. What we would say though, to, to reassure people, when we do start up, mm. we will obviously be live streaming. Mm. Yeah. So yeah. people with internet access um, will be at home uh, allowed to, to watch services. And I also want to say, to, to maybe um, just try and sugarcoat things a little bit, these things are all fluid. They're changing, they're up for review constantly. Now we know, like we've heard about Leicester, things may get tougher, mm. um, but hopefully things will loosen up as well. Okay. So Rich, you might think, well, why is it important for us to meet together? Yeah, I know, you hear all that and you think, is, yeah. is it worth it? Like, like, it's yeah. a lot, um, yeah. it's a lot, yeah. But so, yeah. There's a lot going on, so yeah, I guess there's two things, aren't there? there's all those problems and then we've got in some ways, oh, isn't, isn't this actually quite nice? Uh, I imagine if we we're honest, a lot of us out there, well, there'll be elements of what's been happening that we've actually found quite, quite nice. I mean, I'm, just personally as a family, Sunday is a lovely family day for us now because I'm not rushing, getting up the crack of dawn to finish my sermon or rushing out in the morning to do music or mm. what, whatever those things is. So family, is a, a Sunday is a lot more relaxed family day for us. Um, and there'll be different things for different people actually going, oh, this is actually quite nice. Yeah. Um, so I've got, we've got to be really clear, though, that gathering physically is an essential part yeah, of yeah, church. Yeah. Um, foundational, fundamental. So just the word church, we, we take it, as well, will probably laugh at me now for quoting the Greek, uh, but it comes from the, the Greek word ecclesia, which mm. literally means assembly. Yeah. Church is an assembly, it's a gathering yes. of, of people physically. And so gathering together physically is part of being church. Um, and then just think of perhaps some of the, the biblical metaphors for what a church is. Um, perhaps the biggest three, we've got the body. Mm. Um, mm. You know, a foot or a lung or whatever it might be that is apart from the body is not in a good, st good state, is it? Yeah. A body requires that kind of being togetherness. And that, so that's, that's a really big one. Um, family. A church family, uh, again, our, our earthly families are also different, aren't they? But, yeah. but, but we show our, our attachment um, and commitment to a family by gathering together yeah. uh, as much as, as we can and as, mm. 
uh, we want to be doing that. And then uh, the other one is of a building or temple, spiritual house, the Bible puts in different ways, but again, again, we're, we're called living stones that are being built together into a spiritual house. Mm. Um, so you know, a brick by itself on the floor isn't isn't up to anything. But actually, when we gather together, we are uh, God's dwelling with us. We are kind of God's presence, as it were. Mm-hmm. Um, so so physical gathering is so central. What it means to to be a church uh, and just read the New Testament, just to kind of get the feel of how important it was for people oh, to be huge. together. You yeah. particularly read the letters. Uh, you know, Paul's longing to be with with those churches. Yeah. You, you can feel his heart and his yes. commitment to them, and the amount he encourages people to get together. I was only thinking of this sharing earlier today. We've just finished Philippians. Yeah. I mean, Paul sends Timothy hundreds of miles from Rome, his prison cell, to Philippi, just to get news. Even though he could send a letter, which he did, but he wanted Timothy to see them face to face and then to travel all that way back to give him the report as well. Mm. You know. so there's a real emphasis on that together, physical togetherness yeah. um, of a church. You know, I just, again, uh, I think that the persecuted church has really yeah. got this. Yeah. You know, how much the persecuted church risk to meet together. Yes. Mm. yes. How they would really long to be able to meet together. Yeah. Um, and, and so I think it's just getting clear, to, just to reinforce that the fact that trustees have said we're not going to be meeting together physically now mm. um, doesn't change our desire to do so. Yeah. And we are thinking about working towards, planning towards being able to be together and, and what that might look like. And when it is safely and practically possible to do so, we will yes. be. Okay. So, so we really do want to do want to get there. I, I just I just want to challenge perhaps people who are various reasons going actually yeah, this is quite nice do we really have to kind of come back together again um just just challenge you just generally to say well you know think a bit about what church is um mm. kind of meditate a bit on what church is read uh, your bible see that yeah, yeah. And, and also just a, a clear thing that being part of a church family being part of the body it, it requires sacrifice it requires it's going to cost us and um, that commitment cost is big. It means it's going to cost us our energy, our effort, our time. Um, but it is worth all those things. How many times have we heard people share, um, I suppose particularly midweek, oh, you know, I went to house group, I was exhausted, I didn't really want to go, I'd had such a long day at work. And yet when I went, I was so glad I went and made that effort. Yeah. That's it. And I, th- I think we will have lots of those feelings, hopefully, mm. and when we are able to be together again. Yeah. So maybe we can't meet as we'd love to, but there are maybe things that we can do, Wes? Yeah, definitely. Um, Rich alluded to the fact earlier that tons of stuff has gone on already. And just to assure you, because you probably don't know and hear of everything that is going on, we're in the privileged position of hearing a lot more and we have we've just been excited to i suppose see how healthy spiritually uh, a church is because of its love and pastoral concern and little stories that we've heard of one or two uh, and lots more meeting up and practically helping out we just want to say keep going because i think the temptation might be to to wane a little bit because a lot of extra effort has been put in by a number of you looking out for others And I would say, especially as we we're only just into July, but particularly when we come to August, that is going to be definitely a quieter month for us as a church. There will be no small groups. Um, So we've got to think how we can be creatively looking out for others. With the easing down of measures, that helps. So you can have another household inside your house as well now. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you were having another household around for a barbecue and it it pours down well you can have them inside now and people can even stay overnight with social distancing with social distancing it's still obviously got limitations but there's a help there we can still meet in groups of six so you can have uh, and this is from multiple households outside so outside yeah good (laughs) so six can meet um, in in a garden Um, it is the ideal time of year as well, with the weather mainly and the longer, lighter nights to go for walks, to have barbecues, to have picnics, 
even to stand on the door, the weather's much better than February, isn't it, to, to yeah. chat to someone. If you've got a car and there's not much in your boot, I'd suggest just like we do, stick, a, stick a seat in the back of your boot, like we did the other day, and we went and just sat and talked to someone from a distance on the doorstep, and we can go in the house now, that's different. But, um, and it's, it's I, I, would, I would suggest you, everyone asks for your small group leaders list of everyone, because I'm sure you'll all know, there aren't just the regulars that go, it, it's a long list because the whole of the church are all designated to small groups. So ask for that list and really start praying through it more regularly. And ask the Lord to, to lay on your heart um, some people that maybe you've not been in touch with for a while or just out of interest. I, I don't actually even know them, um, but they belong to our church family. Could I send them a message in some way? Could I do something? I think you can even turn up and surprise people. We've had people do this now. Um, and I know that's a very un-British thing. But the great thing is as well, you can also say, oh, if you don't want them to come in your house, well, I'm sure we're not gonna be able to socially distance in my house. So you could just keep them talking at the doorstep. Yeah. But just spontaneous things like that. Mm. And, and I think it really is though, asking the Lord to lay on your heart. Yeah. Who are the one, two, three people? that you know, we could be looking out for. Who could I have round to watch the service with? Yeah. So people that are not on the internet, we've still, we've still got about 12 or so in the church. Now, they may not want to come, that's fine. Yeah. But if they do, that would be great. There's a couple of bubbles that have happened and that is where one household can form with another household and they can meet together. With a single um, person. With a, sing so a single person. Yeah, so a single person single living with parents. themselves can go um, into or a single parent can go into another household mm -hmm. and join up. That's happened on a couple of instances we've heard about, maybe more. Um, please think about doing that. Or if you're not doing that, just think about inviting different people around who have got internet, but maybe on their own, they might, you might want to watch the service with them. Two of you, you may live on your own. Well, why don't you get together, watch the service together, mm. do the study together, Wednesday nights, things like that. That's great. Anything yeah. else to add? Mm. No, it's, it's just being creative, isn't it? I think it's just really yeah. helpful in helping us to think through. Yeah. You know, two things. What was, was it careful and creative? What was it? What yeah. was it? Careful and creative. Careful and creative. Just that combination of yeah, making sure we're safe, but also let's be creative in the way that we think about how we can meet up and encourage others and support others. Yes, that's a, sorry, just in, in, in again to go back to the New Testament and all my emphasis on gathering together as churches, which I believe is there in the New Testament, mm. but you also see in those early churches um, the other ways in which they got together. Yeah. They were going from house to house and all those yes. mm. um, me meeting in, in homes and all those kind of things. And so again, Perhaps there is that opportunity for those kind of things. We can't yeah. do this all together gathering, no. but are there are those little gatherings that, yeah. we, that can take place. Yeah. Uh, and we would hope, yeah, hope and encourage that that would happen more and more. Definitely, and, and just one other thing I was going to add. Um, maybe if you have got time on your hands, you're already looking out for a few, but you think, actually, I, I don't really know anyone else I could look out for. Maybe I'll get in touch with um, with Andy, Rich, and Wes. Um, just contact us and yeah. say, "Is is there something I can do? Mm. Is there someone I could maybe go and meet up with or look out for?" Then, uh, yeah, please, please get in touch with us. Mm. Mm. Great, um, Rich, you want to pray for us? Yeah, sure. Father, we uh, thank you for the privilege that. Uh, being a church is, mm. that we are born and saved into a church family. We thank you so much for, um, uh, for, for our church family who have adapted so well mm. um, over these last months, for all those who are looking out for and supporting and caring for one another in, in so many different ways. Father, we do pray that you'd uh, give us wisdom individually for knowing how we can best make use of this time and how we can mm. best and um, further encourage each other. Please would you help us not to tire of doing good yeah. as these months go on. But Father, we do pray that you'd help us, uh, again, the trustees, the leaders, in, in planning for what a physical return would look like. Pray that you'd make that possible soon um, mm -hmm. and that we would be able to get together safely 
uh, and to join together, to spur one another on, to sing praises to you and to hear from your word together. We pray you'd help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um, so we just wanted to say thanks for listening. If you've got any other questions, please get in touch with us. Um, we'll try and answer them as best we can. And um, have a great week.